Hello and welcome to this video where I'm going to try and explain the concepts of the singlet and triplet spin states in under three minutes. So let's imagine we have two particles in an arbitrary space. If they're identical it doesn't matter which particle we label as one and which as two, the probability of the particle being there is exactly the same. From this we could say that the wave function must be either symmetric or anti-symmetric, which, be, which can be shown by this equation here as we know that this equation shows the probability of each wave function. So from this we can say that the wave function must be either symmetric or anti-symmetric. For a fermion it's anti-symmetric, whereas for a boson we can see that it's symmetric. So now let's move on to the case where we have two electrons in a system. Electrons are fermions, so it's an anti-symmetric case. To help this, we can split the wave function into its spatial, represented by psi, and its spin, represented by sigma, components. For the whole wave function to be anti-symmetric, we need one component to be symmetric and one to be anti-symmetric. Now we're going to write in terms of psi a, psi b, spin up and spin down to represent the two, two electrons. If the spatial part is symmetric, we get these three equations which the spatial part can fit. If we swap r1 and r2, the equations stay exactly the same, so it's symmetric. For the spin part, if it's anti-symmetric, there's only one equation possible for this to be allowed. In this equation, if 2 and 1 are swapped, then the function is its own negative, so it's anti-symmetric. This is called the singlet state because there is only one allowed spin state s equals 0 because the spins are anti-aligned. So now, if the spatial part is anti-symmetric, it's analogous to the spin state in the previous example. If we swap r2 and r1, it becomes its own negative, it's anti-symmetric. On the other hand, the spin part now has three possible equations in which it's symmetric. If we swap 1 and 2 around, the equations stay the same. This state is called the triplet state, and s equals 1 because the spins are aligned. So in the triplet state, if a equals b, then the wave function is zero everywhere. Hence, no two fermions can exist in the same state, the Pauli exclusion principle. If r1 equals r2 in the triplet state, the wave function is zero everywhere again. So what we can say is that aligned spin electrons have a very small chance of being in the same point in space. However, in the singlet state, if r1 equals r2, the wave function isn't zero. Thus, what we can conclude is that electrons with anti-aligned spins have a much higher probability of being in the same space. Thanks for watching and I hope this has been informative.